here we are then put uh, these panels back on this bike as you can see here this little panel here, this like inspection panel actually all the catch is broken off that so I've just bolted it through the uh, frame to here made a, a temporary thing for it until I can find another panel but obviously I'm going to cut that off and just file it flat might even paint it up just so it matches but uh, there's a few little catches missing off this panel this don't quite go back together right but most of it's uh, most of it's okay but uh, I thought I'd film this video because some temptation uh, has got the better of me. I've actually decided, before I take this for the MOT, I've actually decided to take this carburetor off. So, I started running this yesterday, I was just having a bit of a play with it as I showed you in the garden the other day. Now, when I actually ran it at full throttle it was uh, it was missing, it kept cutting out. So, uh, it might have been alright and it might not, I, I want the thought so. So, temptation's got the better of me and I've, uh, as you can see, I've got a few tools out and a bit of a mess here. I... Uh, I've taken that carburetor off and uh, of course I take a lot of photographs of it just so I can remember exactly where it goes and it's uh, currently just sat in here so before I do anything else I'm just going to have a tidy up tonight and I'm going to start taking this carburetor apart you can see here on the outside it's quite dirty as well so we're going to give that a good clean up but before I do that I'm just going to uh, have a bit of a tidy up in here it's getting a bit uh, unworkable now and I don't like working in a mess so Anyway, the panels are back on, and the carburetor is off. So I've just run this uh, carburetor under the parts washer, as you can see there in the corner. I've got a little parts washer. Um, basically, scraped off any loose dirt. The rest of it, you can see a lot of it's just corrosion and things like that. It's very difficult to get in. The basic idea of doing that is just so no, no dirt or debris gets into this carburetor once I've unbolted these uh, four screws at the bottom, as you can see here. There's four in each corner. But uh, one thing to note on the top, there's a little rubber washer actually sits on the top here make sure that you haven't uh, lost that one as well just a little note to have that actually sits in that outer ring outer rim as you can see there so once you've got it cleaned off keep your bat safe the next thing you're going to need to do you need to clean out every little part in this uh, carburetor there's obviously this ball part to take off now these are your adjustment screws as well there's a, a flat headed screw there and a Phillips one there. You want to make sure you can remember the adjustments on these if it was running reasonably okay. So just for the purpose of the video I've just backed these out. That's actually three full turns and that, I think that's about four turns. That's just sticking out flush past the case in there as you can see. So I know where they go. So what you need to do of course is back those off. Just take them right out. These are little um, just little screws that pull out. Just set the, uh, the air flow the petrol flow through the machine, don't lose your little spring as you can see in there you're going to want to clean all this up real good with some carb spray such as this here this is uh, the stuff I use, this is just STP carb spray cleaner and get it through every little hole you can find so I'm not going to do that but just now because I wanted to just show you the inside of this carburetor I'm just going to pop this back in roughly to where it was I'm just going to take this apart from underneath and we'll just have a look and see what sort of state this is in so I've not been in here yet so let's just take this off and have a quick look this is the bowl of the carburetor where the fuel normally sits in near the uh, needle and seat so I'm just going to take all this off you need to get in every little bit on a carburetor if you're cleaning it off every little hole every little jet and everything it all has to be immaculately clean otherwise it only takes one blockage and this, this won't run properly I would imagine that uh, this is an f ridge bike, it's actually first registered in 1988 I would imagine that this has probably never been off in its life so it's definitely a job worth doing I think, I just couldn't resist taking it off really so I'll take that one out the last one here to one side. While you're at this stage, really really handy if you've got a, a little phone or a little camera just to take a few little pictures of things you know you might you might think you can remember but by the time you uh, you get a bit further delved into these carburetors or any little part like this it's handy just to have a just to have a mobile phone which I just use this to take pictures on just simply pop it onto there and I'll just take myself a couple of snaps just so I can remember where everything lined up properly and I'll do that on, on basically every time I take a part off I'll basically take a photo and just remember the whole thing so I'll just take this ball off you see there that's that's a float and nothing will drop out there these are your two main jets you can see here this uh, 
this is where this tang is, this has actually got a Phillips screw in to hold this uh, needle here, the needle and seat in. So if I tip that up, see the floor will move, but nothing will actually fall apart. Yeah, the bottom of the uh, the ball, you can see all this sludge, this is easily gets pulled up through these tiny little jets, as you can see here. It's uh, all it's a good clean out really. It's not excessively bad, but it uh, doesn't take much if, you, if, if I remove one of these main jets from the bottom. If you've never done this before, it's quite interesting. You think that you probably don't need to be that clean, it should just work, but these little holes in these jets here, you can see through there. They're very, very minute at the bottom, not even so if you can see through that to be honest. So I'll hold it up to the light, they're very, very fine anyway. Yeah, I think you can just about see through there. So that's uh, one thing to look for when you take them off. You really need to make sure that everything you take out, especially if it's got a little hole in it, that uh, everything's immaculately clean. Here's another one here. These haven't got any adjustment on, by the way. These are just locked up tight. No adjustment, no set place for them to be apart from locked up. So I'll just back this one out as well. Just like to do it with my fingers really, so hope of not to drop in it. I'm losing it anyway. You can see here, this has actually got tiny little uh, tiny tiny little holes on here. All these, I think there's probably six on here, there's two there, two there, and two at the other side, yeah there's six on there. They all need to be immaculately clean and also the hole that runs right through this has to be immaculately clean as well. Of course you need to get in and just take off this float. Just take that off basically, just a Phillips there. I'll take that one out to keep my thumb on the whole thing, just so not to lose anything. Put that on the bench. You see there that this uh, this float. I'll just actually lift out there, the little uh, needles just dropped out behind it there as you can see. Right, it's so important really just to take a few pictures as you go along. So, every little hole in here, you can see there's what, one, two, three, four, all these holes lead to passageways through these carburetors, they've all got tiny little passageways in, every little bit goes to somewhere else and it all needs to be immaculately clean and dry before you put this back together. So make sure you've got everything out as much as you can, strip it down as far as you can and I'm just going to spray this up with carb cleaner tonight. I'm going to leave it overnight just to let it all soak in. Um, hopefully flush out any dirt that's in this carburetor. And also be careful with the bowl that you don't lose the gasket off this bowl as well. There's a little there's a little gasket around here. This also wants a really good clean out, including this little tube here that's also got a hole in as well. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to um, spray this up with carb spray and I'm going to leave it and tomorrow I'm going to come back to this, dry it all off, blow it all out with a compressor as well just to help it along a little bit and I'm going to put this back together. So, handy tip, please take a photo if you're thinking of doing it. It's alright for me because I've just filmed this which will help me greatly if I've got any difficulties getting it back together. Just one little final thing, I didn't notice it happened, there's actually this pin that sits through the float here that actually dropped out when I did undid the Phillips screw on the top and took the needle out, so make sure that doesn't drop out as it just did with me, that all needs to go back in as well. Just a quick note, I didn't realise that had fallen off and I thought it would be uh, best just to amend it. Just let you show you where that goes back in. Always make sure you wear your safety glasses when you're doing this as well, you don't want any of this coming back in the face, especially in the eyes. Make sure you get down every little bit you can get to. Even if you think it's irrelevant. I'm just going to fill this up. See here I've taken the two adjustment screws out as well when I get in there as well. 